The free agent move has been amazing so far, including Carlos Correa. He, in many ways, was the last big domino to fall, and he was the biggest domino for some. And a shocking move, he goes to the Minnesota Twins. But how about how to make an entrance? Coming off the private jet, Carlos Correa is ready to roll. <laughs> a three-year, $105.3 million contract. He's got opt-outs yeah. in the first two years of the deal. So you could totally understand his thinking here, Los. He's expecting a big contract, right? Maybe Seager S, 10 years, 300 million, whatever it could be. All right, that doesn't happen. I'll take a short-term deal. Highest AAV ever of an infielder, 35.3 million. I'll ball out, go back on the market again. Maybe I'll stay with Minnesota if I really enjoy myself. But I think it's a smart, calculated move by Carlos Correa. No doubt about it. And also a win for the twins oh, yeah. because they don't have to commit so much money for the long term so this is a short term deal if it works out and he performs incredibly well and he wants to out, go out there and test the market they'll say thank you so much for a great season mm -hmm. and he goes out and tries out out there see if he can get that 300 million dollar contract this is that superb talent when he's healthy he's extremely dangerous setting career highs in home runs last year with 26 yeah. but if you look at that war number the yes. window of replacement second best position player in the game uh, most valuable player in the game. This is uh, a, one of those uh, huge acquisitions by the Twins. And look, when you have Buxton and Correa on the same ball club, yeah. watch out. This is a very dangerous duo. Correa put together a second consecutive injury-free year, first full season since 2016. That allowed him to get those career highs in home runs at 26 and that war of 7.2. He's also tremendous defensively. If you look at defensive runs saved, I mean, he's a clear-cut best guy at his position ahead of Trevor Story. Right, you look at those numbers, and they speak for themselves. So... Not only can he swing the bat, but defensively, he can go get him. I mean, you see here at the defensive run saved, he's at the top of the list. You know, when we're talking about uh, shortstop, you know, Trevor Story, uh, very good, but well above him. Mm -hmm. See, I mean, we're talking about more than 10, uh, you know, DRS uh, above Trevor Story, who is a great defender. So they're not only getting a very potent offensive player, but they're getting a top-notch defender as well. He takes a lot of pride. And don't forget the edge that he brings to that yes. clubhouse, you know, the way he goes about his business. Well, that's the key. The Twins have not won a playoff game. It's well known, right? 18 straight playoff losses when it comes to the postseason. They won the division. Obviously, last year fell back and finished last. They get to the playoffs. He's the type of guy that can be a difference maker. He's the guy that can get you over the hump. And you mentioned Buxton. Prior to his injury, May 6th, he was the MVP frontrunner. So let's pray Buxton's healthy. You lock him up to a long-term deal. You got Correa at shortstop. Urshela coming over. Gary Sanchez. Hopefully, he'll still hit those home runs, get the average up a little bit. Sano hits a big bopper. Twins could make some noise. Yeah, look at also Polanco is a very strong hitter. Don't forget about Kepler. who has a beautiful left-handed swing that produces a lot of power as well. Mm -hmm. So, I know maybe a bounce back here. We know the potential is there. This is a very a team that could surprise you, especially in that central division, yeah. which is winnable. I mean, it's going to be more... It's going to be more competitive. Yeah. Make no mistake about it. However, they do have the tools necessary. If everyone plays up to their capability and potential, mm -hmm. they have the tools necessary to succeed. I'm still a little bit surprised, though. And all credit to Minnesota. You're right. Good, look, good for them for getting Correa. But a team like the Yankees didn't go, wait, he's available? Three years, $105 million for Carlos Correa? That's easy pickings. I'm still surprised by that. I thought he was going to end up in New York. Yeah. So when I got the call and said, hey, do you see where Correa's going? I, I, I really couldn't believe it. I was, I was certainly uh, a shock to me. But I thought he would look great in, in pinstripes. Oh. But let's just say this. I think he found a great spot. Mm. And the contract speaks for itself because it just gives him the liberty and the freedom to go out there and perform and still go out and test the water. So he's highly incentivized. Yes. And the Twins are happy because they don't have to commit long term. Mm. This is a win-win. That's the perfect word for it, incentivized. I actually wish there was more deals like this. Give me a three-year deal, four-year deal, high AAV. Give me $35 million a year. But if it doesn't work out, player can leave. And the ownership also isn't on the hook for a big contract. Maybe one day you can run a team. <laughs> I'm waiting on that call, okay? It's a matter of time, your looks. You and me together are a package deal. Just you know it. that. Uh, Kevin Pillar is another player. Listen, there's still players out there right now in the market. The Dodgers announcing they've agreed to terms outfielder Kevin Pillar on a minor league contract with an invite to the big league camp. They say minor league deal, oh, okay, but if he makes the team, reportedly, he'll make $2.5 million. So Dodgers always looking for depth pieces here. Los, obviously a big contender for another World Series. And this is a guy who's a defensive magician. There's no question about that. Yes, this is a very good move. Look, the Dodgers have been known, uh, one of their strengths is always depth. We talk about, oh, wow, great players, but their depth is absolutely ridiculous. It didn't, need, it didn't matter where you look the bench. Yeah. It was a star player. Yeah. Or a solid player. They do a great job of that. And yes. here they are packing it up again. Yeah, Giants did a great job of that a year ago as well. Platooning, mixing, and matching guys. The Dodgers also, though, they're great when it comes to that playbook. All right, Spring Training Road Trip is presented by Camping World. We head down to Port Charlotte, Florida. Scott Braun and Cliff Floyd hanging out with the Rays. 100 wins, 
division champs, topping the Yankees, the Red Sox, the sizzling Blue Jays last year. I feel like we need to remind the Rays, do you know how good you are? The confidence is there, but they're like, yeah, we're doing this every year at this point. Yeah, we have names all across the AL East, and it's beast all in, in every city, right, when you look across the board. But the Rays, they have one or two superstars on, on the map. Not a lot of superstar players in camp, but that doesn't mean anything because the names on the back of Jersey go out there and play and get the job done consistently. We've seen this team year in, year out, figure out a way, no matter what adversity they're dealing with. Tyler Glass now is down, big starter, big dog in their rotation. It's not going to be there. They figure out the next man up mentality is on point. I always, I've always called them the Tesla of the game. Well, you, <laughs> here goes the blueprint, figure it out, league, and the league can't figure it out. So it's something they're doing here that's special. They're one step ahead. Always. Always. And they did that with their contract extension for their young superstar, Wander Franco, and we had to ask him about it. I mean, I, I'm standing among two guys that made their major league debut at age 20. Although, Cliff, I think he's got a little more in the bank than you, you so? did when you were 20. Yeah, mine was 105. <laughs> 105,000, not 105 million. All right, so then what's the first purchase that was made post-contract extension usted, in the off-season? Ustedes dos, uh, debutaron en los 20 años, él no tanto como tú, mm -hmm. y, pero después del contrato, ¿qué fue lo primero que compraste? Bueno, eh, <coughs> me alegro que ellos también pudieron, pudieron debutar a la misma edad que yo, y cuando yo hice mi contrato... Lo... It feels good that you also debuted at 20. Yeah. 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 Common with you. Um, he actually, the first thing I decided to buy was to help out my family. I wanted to help out my family one way or another. Little, just little things, you know, you know, buying a bed for someone or something like that. That's kind of what I wanted to spend my money on. Was that an easy decision for you to sign this deal and be with this organization for a long time? What, what, what made you um, decide that ultimately this is where you want to be for 10 years? Fue fácil la decisión uh, firmar aquí con Tampa Bay um, y, y, y por qué, y por qué fue la decisión tan fácil. Porque yo entiendo que ellos confían en mí. Definitely the trust that I have in them, they have in me. You know, there's a lot of trust in there. You know, me coming down from pretty much from nothing, giving me an opportunity to come up here, that's why I wanted to sign with them. You're young, so people that you idolize in the league probably are still in the league. Who were some of your favorite players that you were watching, and have you been able to talk to any of them? It is joven, uh, cuando eras niño, mirabas a los que algunos que todavía están jugando. Hay alguien con quien uh, admiras o hablas seguidito que todavía está jugando? Claro, claro, hay muchos como José Ramírez, Fernando Tati. Uh, definitely guys like Jose Ramirez, Fernando Tatis, we still communicate. You know, a lot of you know, young stars that are coming up, uh, we just like to represent our flag in our country. I feel like if Wanda Franco asks for something, maybe it'll help us out. So can you hook us up with a couple of these and maybe we'll put the MLB Network logo on it for next year for spring training? What do you think? Que tú puedes conseguir muchas cosas como tú eres. Y si después de una sudadera así para que pongan en el logo de MLB sin las mangas. Muy bueno, muy bueno. No, no, bro. Hey. Congrats, man. Have a great thank you, thank year. Thank you, right, bro. No doubt. No doubt. I appreciate you. What do you, what do you, you say? Guys. What do you say? Uh, he said, that was a good one. 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 Well, I want, I want him to <laughs> tell him. <laughs> if he says it, they'll, they'll be like, all right, we'll get it. Robert told us to. <laughs> he didn't say he'll get it. He just said that was a good one. <laughs> Tell you what, Bronny and Cliffy, uh, sleeveless, watch out. I mean, that's going to be a real suns out, guns out type situation. Uh, thank you, fellas. Spring training road trip 2021. Statistics by month for Vonder Franco. Look at the WRC+. Plus. She gets a little taste, right? 36 plate appearances. July jumps up. August is bananas. And in September, October, he was also amazing. It's so hard to play Major League Baseball, loves. It's so hard to play at the highest level. You're the number one prospect, all this hype around you. They're a first place team. Takes a little time to get set. Once he was rolling, the guy was ridiculous. Like, I have such admiration for guys who not only meet potential, but exceed that. Yeah, especially when you start off slow, which, <laughs> which that's a huge test mentally for a young player to get over. And he started off a little bit slow, had a big first game, yeah. and struggled a little bit, but he just got his bearings and he was able to perform at the level that. Everyone thought he could perform. But right. Don't get too excited because this is a very high standard to set him, you know, put him up at. Like we talk about WRC plus in that last month of 157, yeah, above 200 in the postseason. My guys, that, that's that's very hefty. Now, do we expect him to continue to be at that level? It's all right. Let's say that he goes down 10 percent and he plays at 130 WRC plus. He's still one of the best in the league. <laughs> so it's okay, even if he regresses a little bit. Yeah, this is a very solid player. I, uh, 
the potential for him to be able to make uh, adjustments on the fly, the ability that he has, is astronomical. And we saw it throughout the entire, you know, last uh, half of the year. He was so impressive. And again, it's a good reminder that he signed an 11-year, $182 million extension. There's very few guys you'd say, you know what, I'm going to lock you up right now. And that contract could be in a few years looking like a steal. Like, if he meets those expectations, you'll go, hmm, 182? Like, knowing the Rays don't do this, but they realize the potential of this young man and his value. What impresses you the most about him as a player? Because looking at those numbers, he's not a home run guy. Like, if you extrapolate that 16 home runs, what is it for you? Is it just the, the bat speed? What is it? The way he goes about his approach, you know, it's so solid at the plate. He knows what he's doing. He seems like he knows what pitch he's looking for. He lays off the pitches that are out of his zone, and when he gets it, he gets a healthy hack at the baseball consistently. Yeah. That is so important, and for a young player to get that, you know, and to have the ability to be able to go, okay, this guy likes to throw the up and in fastball. I'm going to hunt that. Yeah. He's an off-speed guy. I'm going to sit back on it. At this early age, it's very impressive. And this is why they made that investment. And I'll, I'll make one last point about this. They went ahead and did this early. Yes. When you go back and you look at guys like Mookie Betts and what happened with the Red Sox, he ended up walking. Mm -hmm. Does it make more sense to find your true talent and lock him up soon so that you can get those young years mm -hmm. you know, under your organization instead of waiting until he becomes a free agent and see you later goodbye? Yeah. This is a great investment. And it's funny, the way you're talking about his patient approach kind of sounds like Juan Soto, which... That's about as high a comp as you can pay a young hitter. If you Soto esque, obviously the sky's the limit for Wander Franco. That's the story when it comes to the race. We'll talk more about them later on the show. But when we come back, Freddie Freeman and Matt Olson, two of the best first base from the game. Carlos breaks down both the skills of these guys. Next.